Hey everyone, welcome to Streaming with Steven, where today we're doing some drawing. Um, I have a non-responsive video capture here, just one second. <clears throat> We'll probably have to re-engage the... Oops. That's a mistake. Oh, I see what happened. The mirroring... The mirroring stopped. Apologize for the... Uh... Annoying this. There we go. We good? We're good. All right, cool. Hey, Lester, how's it going? We've got Cosmic in the chat as well, or doing a bit of lurking. That's cool. Welcome, welcome. And hey, Firepath. So today is, um, I guess, not that we are, we are entirely without plan, just not as planned as usual because I'm using some new new computer today, so it's uh. Preference, preferences weren't entirely ironed out as much as I would have liked, so. But we're going to do some sketching and get some characters that I do. Oh, there we go. That I need to figure out for this book that I'm working on. So you've all seen Happy Boars here before. In, in the, if you've seen any of the other streams where it's, we've done... Uh, the emote is out, actually, yes. And I don't know if the... So, Boris Love is out, and I'm actually now curious. Just one sec. Uh, is the other one out? It is out as well. Okay, cool. So we've got Boris Love and the eye roll. Now, unfortunately, I didn't realize that the eye roll was... I thought it was going to be tied to the 1k emote, uh, but it's actually tied to the 5k emote, so... Um, <laughs> only available to me right now, I guess, which is a bit of a drag, but... Yeah, she turned out all right in chat. Oops, that I'm working on a nice new high-res screen as well, so cool. All right. But I need to figure out Porcupine Friend on, these, on the side here. So all of these characters have names, and I don't really want to divulge all the names yet because it's sort of a... Uh... Yeah, I don't want to give too much about the book away because I'm... I don't want the idea to want, I guess, to be frank about it, so... So I'm going to be doing a, a little bit of drawing based on... I need a bit of copy and pasting and fun stuff like that. Uh, you're sort of experiencing me work, working things out right now. So we're going to go to some images of porcupines. One of the things I always had a trouble with is figuring out how I want the spines to look. And these are all individually traced. And while I think that's pretty cool, I don't know how sustainable that is in the long run. And Firepith helped me, helped me do all of these back in the day. So, but I'm just not happy with the way, I guess, the chin is looking here. And then this feels a little bit frumpy. So I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. I just want to try to find some porcupines to get a better better idea of how they look. I guess it sort of depends on which porcupine you look at it, doesn't it? Hmm. You can just call him Ponic the Porcupine, of course. Of course, of course. Yeah, sorry, Alistair, I missed your comment there. Yeah, so you can tie them to bits. So right, there are actually depending on how many bits people have paid for on your channel. Um, I can do three levels of bit emoji emotes. So I've got one for the 1000. I've done one for the 5000 already. And then I think you can do one for the 10,000 already. All right. All right. So porcupine porcupine body is an odd little one. So it may not have been entirely far off. So I'm just going to hide these and do a sketch layer here to try to figure some stuff out. It's better than doing it as a sub-level for the Discord. 
I actually don't know. I didn't realize there was a sub level for the Discord. I have to admit, I'm not exactly sure what that means. All right. So the pictures I'm looking at sort of have the. Well, one of them has the porcupine body looking something very bizarre. It's almost like it's a shape like this. The nose, I guess, is a bit more of a snowy, snowy thing right there. And that is actually, it's arguably an illustration, so I shouldn't much stock into this. All right, let's undo that. Although body shape wise, that's interesting. It actually does kind of look like that. It's almost like this half circle of sorts like this. <clears throat> oh, tear for the subs, yeah. Yeah, I found... I wanted. I want to do another one for tier 2 sub, but I'm not sure how often that would get used. <clears throat> to be honest. Sorry, I lost the photo that I was working on. Okay, so we're going to do a cartoon porcupine. It'll, it may end up very well end up looking like the other sketch I had up there, but... They're very, very round back to them. I guess for, for me it's going to be a matter of, I guess, in order to figure out what they're... Their drawn shape will look like. I might need to figure out a skeleton structure a little bit. Let's do that. Fork you. I'm skeleton. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, just look. I'm actually going to bring this one in. Add images to photos. I think I can do that. I cannot. Never mind. So the skeleton actually has. This is going to be super, super loose. Head, neck comes down a little bit, and then it's got a very round spine like this. And then the tail kind of goes like that. And then for me, so the spine is there. Rib cage. And then the picture I'm looking like looking at has one leg like this. And then on the other side of the hips, another one that goes it's kind of in a walking pose. And then the shoulders are up at the very top here. And come back. Which is strange because it almost all of the, I guess they're just mostly squish, squish and fluff underneath the quills because most drawings have them looking essentially like there's not much detail in the legs. They just sort of go like this. That's not very good sketching. A lot of animals, you know, like dogs that are pretty lean, you can actually see all the way up into their, their legs and stuff. Porcupines, it's very... Especially if I'm going to do a, a cartoon porcupine. Probably going to be a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Because on some level, it's almost like a squirrel body, but without the big hips. What are you doing? And then the quills I was looking at. Depending on the porcupine, start right 
behind the head like that for some of them. Let's get rid of. Well, that's good. That's not good. And then we'll basically kind of go. It's strange. Some of them actually don't have. So put the head down lower. I think that's probably more appropriate. Sorry, this little bit here is just all rough trying to figure it out before we get into the more detailed stuff. And this hinges along the tail there too. back and then I guess it sort of starts kind of weird intersection point above the shoulder there we can almost trace the head back like that and it almost has this sort of stegosaurus feel to it Cam, hey turtle, how's it going? Welcome to the chat. I'm just trying to figure out some rough proportions for porcupine illustration that I'm working on. So I gave it a key for a fairly round face before, but I'm gonna to try to actually make it a bit. But never were. back to the skeleton drawing. So the hips don't actually look as wide as I thought they did originally. Hmm. Hips are only about this wide. We've got this, if we had the spine go like this. The head's probably more like this shape. Not so circular. Doing some work in Pixelmator, so this is kind of relaxing watching some with more artistic abilities. <laughs> but we'll see. This is this is one of those times I actually thought to myself, man, I haven't drawn anything in this book. It feels like almost a year, so there's gonna be some definitely some rust happening. Rust Kicking some rust off the, uh, the old abilities here. And then rib cage looks like it's round. Spine things down. Definitely round though. I guess if they were standing there, it'd be something a little bit like. It almost almost feels like it's a, a monkey of sorts. Which there's not really a big. Oops. Shoulder, not really much in terms of clavicle as well. So, if, so that's the, where the spine meets up with the rib cage. Collar, collarbones basically go like that. Hmm. 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 
Hey, Tara, that's awesome for four months. Thank you very much. And congratulations, that's awesome. What sort of a, I guess you can't really tell from your badge there how long you've been following. Now I've got to figure out a way to cartoonize this. This, um, porcupine. How many toes we got? We got four toes. We'll cartoonize it with three there. If I gave, if I sort of gave the legs their own kind of fluffiness just for now, I mean it'll, it'll blend together. I mean I don't think when it's it's very fluffy you'll be able to see like you know a leg and then another leg that looks bent like this. I think there's going to be a lot of joined uh, joined skin. But if we have it, we have the little tiny ankles. Oh, something like that. Five months, because you think? No, you. It wasn't right away because you're, um, sorry, turtle. It wasn't right away because you're, you're, um, oh my goodness, what's it called? Twitch Prime, Prime Gaming hadn't rolled over yet. I'm not sure if that's affecting anyone's screen, but I've got that look away thing up there. And we will stop that for the rest of the day. Awesome. Alright, Streamlabs has not been interrupted, so that's fantastic. information there. Maybe what I'll do is just do a copy and paste because or what I'll do is I'll create a skeleton layer. That's what I'll do. This way I can sort of keep the reference thing that I had built in with the spine and stuff like that. Maybe change it a different color so it fades. stuff I don't need anymore. It's... Uh, why not? Ah. And in this layer, I'm just going to call that I'll have the fill layer, just so now we're filling in, filling in over the skeleton. Oops. 
delete the skeleton. And then we'll delete, or we turned off the skeleton, I should say. And I will delete all of the skeleton that I don't need. I'm just doing this because I'm trying to separate it and separate everything out into two separate layers. Back on, then drop the transparency. Okay. Cool. Hey, Cosmic. Welcome back. Um, no snacks? What? That's all right. That's an automated thing, so it's always disappointing. That means it's always disappointing when someone comes back because there's no no snacks. Oh yeah, turtle, happy holidays to you as well. It's not a round face anymore, so I need to figure out how this is going to look. It's interesting because uh, this, this porcupine's in the same story as Boris, as you saw probably at the beginning, so I don't remember how are her eyes right now. That's not the right layer. Wait, what? <laughs> That's all right. These faces I see for these porcupines. I guess the question is, is this porcupine a North American porcupine? Or an African porcupine? Because the North American ones actually look like their faces very much. Nose kind of was like that. <laughs> this is hilarious. Looks like you're porcupines. I'm sorry for butchering you all in terms of how you're supposed to be drawn. Very strange nose when you look at it even close. Almost like a ko oh, koala tape nose on this drawing that I'm looking at anyway. <laughs> All right, so clearly we need to not do what we're doing here. Again, if we're going to cartoonize it a little bit. Exaggerate the nose. It's a girl porcupine, so it's not like I need, I don't always like to do the stereotypical eyelashes and things of the sort to differentiate between boy and girl, but maybe I'll try to find a way to not do that.
Really pretty good news. Ooh, I like that news. Because similar to the shark drawings, I don't really I don't always do a lot of round round stuff. It's it tends to be semi-angular. Hmm, cool. Uh lesson learned, different types of porcupine. So we're gonna exaggerate the nose in favor of being more more, I guess, more of a deliberate nose. Originally, the nose I draw, drew in Penny was just sort of like a little thing like that, like a cat nose with teeth coming down from there. You know, two eyes. But from the drawings that I've seen, while it's not a definite nose, or it was, well, it's not a super defined nose like a circle, it actually depending on which image you look at and the color of the fur, it kind of looks like it. Definitely goes across the bridge right there, so... Maybe I'll kind of plan it so that it comes down her eye like that, and that'll come down to the other side of it. I can put the eye on the outside there. I guess the teeth aren't super visible. Not like, not a beaver. Give it some slight, give her some slight teeth, but not as exaggerated as they were before. All right, I've got the rib cage there. And on this side, so the body basically probably looks. Let's make it basically look like a pear. That'll be pretty easy to reproduce, so a big circle in the middle. Okay, so the. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure it out for being able to draw it multiple times. So the head is sort of. Oops. Sort of an oval shape like that. And the belly is a huge circle. Okay. I can do that multiple times for sure, for sure. So I write, I tell my family about the eyelashes and the animation cartoons to differentiate between male and female, and they never believe me. So thank you. Oh yeah. The only time that I didn't see it was in, um, I shouldn't say the only time, but the time it really struck me was in um, Narnia. They actually had, uh, I think it was two different beavers, Mr. Beaver and Mrs. Beaver. I think they might've been simply their names and they looked identical, so it was only from their voices you could tell. I feel weird even putting this chin line in there because they're so fluffy. It's almost like they would just kind of go. Remember all the happy times we had? Hmm. Maybe I'll have to kind of give a. A furry chin line instead. Very much I'm gonna reduce that skeleton a little bit more. Well, it's it's funny because sometimes when I do rough sketch rough sketch stuff, Alistair, um, it's so as you can see, so weird and all over the place. Oops. 
when I'm trying to do stuff like this. Like I'm never happy with like the crazy rough sketches I do. It's not until I kind of try to add refinements on here and there and even then it doesn't work out the way I want. And so she had a uh, no. She does not have a bow. She has a headband. That's what it is, right. And because uh just to kind of hold those those pine those quills back. It's funny because where does it tie off? I'm not really sure. It just sort of disappear underneath the quills. I think instead of having a straight line come out for the jaw, I like the uh, making it less defined. I mean, this probably won't be the final thing, but doing a squiggly thing like that would be better. And this is the part that I still had difficulty with before. It's like I'm not sure how to get, you know, all the quills to. Yeah, I don't want to just go like this and say, there are your quills there, porcupine. On some level, I would love to. <laughs> On some level, I would love to. It's a giant mohawk. We like to give these characters, like, street names, if you'd rather not tell us. Sonic the porcupine. Not bad, not bad. We'll go with Ponic for now. This is one of the things I talked to Joel about. Is a lot of my characters when I draw them, I'll do, you know, just in rough sketches, I'll do eyes like this. And he always says it's hard to do eyes that are just kind of filled in. Because when you want to make them look side to side, what do you do? You you basically just the eyes off to the side like this the mouth there so it looks weird so you've, you've got to add something to the eyes suddenly to make them look like they're looking over to the side or something which just looks weird so it's easier if you have circular eyes and, and i'm you know paraphrasing what he said but basically if you got have circular eyes and then pupils in the middle looking straight ahead looks creepy but you know those eyes stay the same and gives you the opportunity to look all over the place. So one of the things I've been trying to figure out with these drawings is do I keep the eyes the way I've got them so far? Because I really like the way they look on Boris. Um, uh, I always can't find There we go. Clear. The music's actually not bad. This has been my favorite channel I've found on uh, Pretzel Music so far. Pretty chill, laid back, and it doesn't feel like it's I'm fighting with it. I chose the no, the non-dialogue channel as well, or non-dialogue filter. But even still, that already looks more like a porcupine than what I had before. Alright, let's turn the skeleton up a little bit so we can get a better look at the shoulders. Alright, so the shoulders are... Not going to be very sort of buried in the fur, so I almost feel like the arms are going to start to show up right around here. We got some floof in there. Is not going to be a very well defined arm, that's okay. I actually think I like that. So 
was originally going to give her sort of thinner, more defined arms, but I think I'm just going to have the arms almost just be the forearms. Yeah, I like that actually. Of course, on the outside one, it'll be a little bit more obvious because the body comes down like that. Hmm. Cool. Um, hey, Danny, welcome to the chat. No hand cam, yeah, just because some, a lot of the time I was sort of gesturing to this part on the screen or talking about something, and it doesn't really make any sense when you can't see it. This way you can... That's basically all it is. It's so you can see what I'm pointing to. Or if I wanted to, I could say, you know, Take a look at that. Is it to find the right angle again? I'm not going to figure out what I want to do for her hands. Part of me wants to give her teeny tiny hands. All right, let's take a look at what the porcupine hand looks like. Let's go back to the skeleton. They're actually almost the same size as the feet. I guess they're all technically feet. Uh, that's not true. These can pick... Porcupines can pick things up. Like... Alright. Um... The peach pit or peaches or something, really. Hmm. Well, I guess we could... Well, I'll give her a name, I guess. Her name's Penny. Penny Pine. But I like all of the name choices so far. And sorry, Danny, you were talking about it's nice if you want to grow and learn from others' movements for technique. Oh, I see, for the, the hand thing, yeah. It's interesting because I hold my pencil the same way I... This I draw and write the same way, but Joel... Joel actually, he draws like this, which I, I've tried to do, but it just doesn't work with me. Interesting. Alright, so I'm going to give her slightly smaller hands than I did before. Okay, I don't want to, I'm not going to have her hand ever like this probably, but I think I just want to figure out what the hand looks like. So it's probably going to be That's not bad. Joel's very good at drawing hands. If you've ever looked at any of his old web comics that he put online, he uh, he can do sort of hands holding things and and front angled hands just placed on the table and stuff really well. So I find they're so difficult to draw and so. I'm jealous of, uh, jealous of Joel's hand drawing skills. Pretty excellent. I missed a bit of the chat there. Uh, let's see. Oh, cool. Are you, is that to me or to Alistair? The portal playthrough. Because I didn't, it was funny because I didn't intend to go, th if you did, if you were watching mine, you know that I did not intend to go that long into it <laughs> it's funny but it's a really fun game so i'm gonna try uh number two one of these days my sons have been egging me to egging me on to play it over the holidays I haven't had the time so i guess what do we do do we do three finger like most cartoons I guess how many do they have? Actually, just one second, sorry. Checking the image here. Looks like they've got four front facing fingers with no real opposable thumbs. 
that I can see anyway. So technically it's more like, you know, palm one, two, three, four, but I don't want to do that. So we're sort of, I forget the word. There's a fancy word that personifying them. It's not that giving animals human, human characteristics. I can't remember. Oh, okay. There wasn't an Alistair's portal. Pool. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay, cool. No, it was a, uh, I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Um, I gotta start, <laughs> and I was warned. My, uh, I will not be able to sit down and finish Portal Two in one session. It'll be, it'll be probably a five session thing. So, I just need to figure out when I'm going to do that. Um, so hand, probably a little bit more rectangular and narrow. With long fingers. That actually works out well. Maybe over here, instead of being... Instead of being a wide hand like that... I'll just do something that's... That's good. I'll probably play around with those fingers a little bit at some point. We watched um, Wolf Walker on Apple TV a little while ago. And there's a bird that had claws. And its feet were basic. Its claws were basically like this, and then the, the toe part essentially went like that. So a little hook on the end. But it was almost like a almost like a half circle on the the end for the feet. Yeah, that was poorly done. So if you said if we did a, a foot aimed on, oh, this wrong color. Bird foot, just one like that. Super exaggeration. And the little pads underneath were almost half, half circles like this. Little claws on it. That was pretty cool. So we could do something like that for um, any penny pennies penny's hands here maybe. And go up and then. I don't know what y'all think, but I think that's pretty. Well then that's pretty as well. Thank you for saying that. There we go. Nice little hand. That's good. Oh my goodness. I don't know why the volume keeps going up on this. Yeah, it keeps going way up. I don't even turn the volume up. And one thing about Penny Pine, I've always got her holding a daisy. So we'll actually take that out. Those are for now and we'll just put the knuckles for the fist in there. I do like drawing little fists. I think it's they're fun. You get the thumb that goes up and the tucks over. And then the knuckles are just basically like that. And she can... Figure out the details in the daisy later, but that's I will just I think we're gonna do that. Keep the sort of narrow and long palm. And just to make it easy to reproduce, I'm gonna do all the fingers to be roughly the same length as the palm. Um I do I don't think that'll stop my notifications from coming, but we'll see. Alright, let's there just one sec. Um, has anyone here played a game in the Half-Life series? No, I have not. I've heard of it, but I do not know it. 300 hours to beat, oh my goodness. Penny Pine's pretty great. I'm pretty happy with her. So I've got, I don't remember, I think there's seven characters total in this book. Boris is the main character.
And I don't want to give too much of the book away. I think I meant I may have mentioned on stream before. There's there's one book that I came up with an idea for, and then it just I think I did mention this. It just showed up in the bookstore. Like my idea, not word for word, but basically the idea for a book that I had literally showed up in the bookstore after I've had after I half wrote it. What? The tale of a little girl who sneezes and blows away letters from a word make other words. I don't even have Alexa or anything like that around here that would listen <laughs> to my suggestions to send them to someone else. I can't even do that conspiracy theory. All right, again, now we're at this point where this is where I'm not happy with the pines. I haven't figured out how to do it. Some of them have the... Some some of the, the images almost have bills coming from everywhere. Let's just turn this skeleton off for a second. Here we go. All right, no skeleton. And now that we've got our basic shape, we can just try to work with what we've got here. It's almost like there's this halo of wheels around. This down around to... I guess really they come down almost like a almost like a lion mane that goes down to the tail. Maybe that's what I need to do. Comes the tail, your spine. Okay, skeleton on. Oops, no skeleton on. So this is where her spine connects to her. I guess her sort of her hip bone across there. Then the tail would come out of there. Probably like that. I should probably go down and then back. Alright, we went too far with all of that. Okay, let's do this with the tail in mind. Shall we? Let's pay attention to the anatomy, folks, shall we? Um, I'll probably end up working on the book on and off for at least half of the year because well I have I have all of the rough, rough sketches already planned out um, but it was based on the idea of doing it as a horizontal book and then I was talking to a publisher and basically since I am n n oops, not a known author or illustrator Chances a typical okay a typical children's book is eight by ten and thirty two pages and that's because you can essentially take a large press sheet for anyone who cares and I forget exactly what it is but I think it's um you can get one two three four. basically. I think it's eight sheets like this up. And so if you think about each piece of paper, when you fold it in half, you've got page one, and then two's on the other side, three, and then four's on the other side. So every one of these is four pages. So two in the front and two in the back. This is so not drawing a porcupine right now. So, so if we've got eight of these up on one press sheet and each one of them is four, that gives you your 32 pages. So that includes intro pages, publisher notes, everything. 32 pages can be done on one press sheet. And basically the entire thing can be stapled through the middle. So it's very cheap to make. And so when I wanted to make mine horizontal pages, so eight by 10, wider like this then suddenly it's a huge waste of paper over here and it's not 
it's not economical to do that. So in the conversations with, not that I have a publisher, but just sort of trying to get information. Um, yeah, it's got to be reformatted to go vertical. Um, <laughs> Looks like Boris Love there is getting some action. That's good. Find the right layer. Okay. This is where I kept having the problems before as well. I was trying to figure out this this quill pattern. It just doesn't want to. All right, take a look. Actually, I think I got a good image to work from. But it's almost just like it's uh, instead of it going up. And that's just what I'll do. It's almost like a very fuzzy looking beaver, to be honest. Or maybe that's a young one with no mature wills. Hmm. I think originally I was thinking that people might want to view it horizontally, so I could do do it up on an iPad, but I'm also, I'll probably end up doing it. Well, I will, I will, I'll take the iPad. Oh, I can't see that. The iPad portrait format or that shape, at least anyway, in consideration when I draw it so that I'll probably, if nobody wants to publish it, oops, and I will publish it as an ebook. And then I'll definitely need to take into consideration the, uh, Portions of iPads and tablets and things like that. Not sure how much of the uh, tail is actually going to be visible. Make sure I include it just in case. I'm not sure of any other way to do this other than doing every line individually and this is just super roughing it in but and i guess i have that that defined line that's going to be the tough thing because there's not going to be a defined line huh that actually almost looks better right off the bat by removing that line I'll definitely have the the leg will need to come up and sort of blend in a little bit there but it's hilarious about just getting rid of the i think that was my mistake before was having that super defined line in there for the back of penny Looks like she just didn't. Oh my goodness. Nice. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that I've... I didn't take, you know, creative English or anything in school. I almost wish I had it because looking back, I mean, I've, I've written a bunch of stuff just because I've had story idea. <laughs> I had story idea after story idea and kept telling them to my wife and eventually she just went, oh my goodness, stop telling me stuff. I do not want to hear another thing unless you're actually going to write them down. And I thought, oh, all right, I should probably do that. So then I started writing and I think I mentioned this before, got into a writing group that was awesome and super helpful. We sort of stopped the group stopped which is a bit of a shame but it just priorities shifted cool all right this is already better than before neat I think we're getting some uh, 
A visit from the bots. How can, how nice. Uh, you didn't think that me self-publishing a book for free would be possible. Here we are. Oh yes, it is. It's crazy. Where are you going to um, post your book? Will you be able to do that through something like for for Kindle or for um, Kobo and stuff like that, or just available as a downloaded PDF? Monsieur Alistair. Hmm. We wonder if we could just get away with, like, as little, as little, as little, oh my goodness, can't even speak, as little arm as possible. Almost really like this, just this little tiny arm there, just sort of imply that it's in there. Neat. Well, I've got a new penny pine. that line in there does a sort of, sort of a more where should I place things line let's, let's, let's check base shape here again I don't think you'd really be able to see the face definition but I find that a lack of any line here is weird oops how do I want to make face come across like that? I mean, that's what I'll do. Give her like these little quill side burny things that almost define a jawline a little bit. see maybe okay i'll just finish off the uh headband and maybe that can act as the or the indicator where the jaw line ends right there or something or starts yeah i fire pith didn't it yeah, Firepith was with me a few times, and I was trying to struggle with this. I was I was drawing her repeatedly at a local bookstore that we all went to, and Firepith was helping me trace all of these lines and stuff. But where to go? Um... Oops, sorry, I'm trying to figure out where. Which layers to turn off? Okay, right, there. So this basically, I had this sort of very defined line in the previous drawing. I thought I wanted her, her leg shape to be very visible. And here you can see I had colored it in once and I was trying to figure out the leg drawing, the leg pattern again. So turn off the coloring. This is where things were in the end, but they just, it just bugged me. I couldn't figure it out for the life of me, but getting rid of that hard edge. I think that's where it's at. Um, and then, yep. And definitely different shaped face too. You want to just try without the nose, as full as that, and see what it looks like. Oh, sorry, turtle. I missed it. I missed you leaving. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you very much for popping by.
Yeah, uh, uh, McFly, you and I will we'll chat about the book because it's uh, I can show you all the drawings and stuff like that. And I think a good part of the the drawings will end up here, but I just don't feel like divulging all at once. Let me just check. Actually, that might not be too bad. Let's do. figure this out. Maybe we can apply a big nose without actually having to define that. Yeah. Oh, this song. Yeah! like that better. Like it would almost match with a... Uh, being a... Uh, not that she's got quills on her face per se, but and having a less defined nose. I think a less defined nose is better. Yeah, less agree. I don't know, it just seems to be softer with a nose like this. It's interesting because I the original one that I oh my goodness, loving the nose now. It still needs to be refined some, but that's so much better than the previous one. Renioplasty? Renioplasty, uh, clinics. And this, oh yes, back to the eyes. I hadn't figured out what I wanted to do. Do we just go for the, the eyes that don't have the whites? And just sort of imply direction with, with that, or do we actually just decide to give these characters more traditional cartoon eyes. I'm not sure. The entire time so far, you know, these eyes are not a thing. I don't mind those eyes. Hmm. I have to play with that a little bit, figuring out. Maybe instead of the uh, mascara down there, what would it look like? Because her with her her pines, not her pines, her quills. I guess one thing about doing the eyes with the irises in it, you can get more creative with the, the eye shape.
and then the eyelashes I can just oops and then come up and just All right, I think that's what the eyelashes are going to do. Rhinoplasty. I didn't even know South Park is such a sun. Uh, my goodness, is South Park still on? Like new ones? The tales to tell about that one. <laughs> yeah. I don't envy anybody. I don't envy anyone who has to have. Uh, Surgery down to their their nose like that. Just seeing the bruising afterwards and just looks it's so painful. Oh right, we've got the skeleton showing underneath again. No skeleton. Funny, originally I was going to um Color these more cartoon style with a very dark outline, but the more I play around with the pencils here, the more I want to, um, the more I feel like I just want to shade the entire thing in. Might be a bit overkill in the shading in the nose, but I do like that. Cool. All right. Well, I think I figured out. I think I figured out Ms. Pine here. Fun. All right. There. But that's her. The look we want. Or what? Head, what shape will give her head when you see her straight on? That's her height, including the headband. Okay, that's the headband height. Her head's probably not that wide. Uh, the pandemic special, huh? On a t-shirt, that'd be fun. I've been trying to think of what I could do with it some of my drawings, so maybe a t-shirt would be fun. Sorry, Danny, don't remember having that much pain. That much external bruising, swelling, and pain, yes, but... An internal bruising, okay. Interesting. I'm definitely going to be doing stickers, or at the very least I want to do stickers of the emotes that I've done so far, because, um, I think, I think these three... And I, will... I think these three made cool stickers, so I'm going to be doing um, probably some more emotes, or at least some more illustrations that are like those three, and make a sticker sheet of them. But I am going to, I am trying to think of, you know, just stuff. Extra income is always nice. And extra income from doing things that I like is extra, extra nice. The head's probably too wide. The bottom of the band comes here. It's almost like the line of the nose goes up like this for the eye. A 
with the eye that angle, I don't want them to want to look angry, so I'll have to sort of I might cheat it a bit. Yeah, that's gonna be the head too wide. One guaranteed customer. There we go. <laughs> Still trying to get used to the double tap on this uh, new iPad pen. Love it, but sometimes I accidentally, when I'm shifting it around in my hand, see just right there. I don't know if you can see it from that angle. basically up here on the icons. Oh my goodness. Too many notifications. Every time I double tap, which is back and forth. Excellent. Super convenient when it works when I want to, but when it's not when I want to. This is the first time I've drawn eyelashes up at the top, and I think I like it. I think it works, works especially well because it's almost like the quills just come off. We could even make them even more exaggerated, potentially, potentially, and have to, have to see. I don't think she's ever going to appear straight on like this, but I always like to try to figure it out from the different angles to make sure that We've got the bases covered. One of the things I don't find them very strong in is coloring. Those eyes don't look too similar. I made them go to try and go in the corner there. Over there. Are they lower here? They are lower. Let's see about. Mm, Yeah, I guess that's probably more the shape that they are. This feels like the band's too low now. Oh, I'll figure it out.
she's holding her flower in her right hand. Dainty little fingers. Not dainty, just slim. All right, Danny. Um, have yourself a wonderful night. Thank you very much for popping by. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you back soon. Take care. Rest well. This part looks off too because I extended it out unnecessarily. It'd probably be more like. Come up to there. I don't know. We said we were going to make her body air shaped, didn't we? Let's bring it. Bring out the grid. Sort of dry out. The floor there, or the floor, the floor line. There we go. Oops, I bumped the camera there. Stop it. I realize now we're. Completely out of frame for where I was. It's almost like the circle for her belly. Starts at her jawline there. Feels too wide. Maybe it would actually be more bad from this angle. 
I don't know, I don't know. Or does that come down to about below? Um, yes, art, uh, graphic design, I honestly knew nothing really about until I took it in art school. I told people I was going to do it because I had a cousin who was a designer and fairly successful. I just knew that after a semester in a bachelor's science program, um, it wasn't going to be my thing. So I went to um, apply to the local art college and got in. And thankfully, that I mean, even art aside, I'm glad I did because that's where I met my, my lovely wife. And family side of things is all comes from meeting at that school, so that's awesome. But I decided to take a design course while I was there just because I told everyone that's what I was going to take and thought best to not just make stuff up. And it turns out um, I really liked my first course and then just kept taking more and more and then applied to the design program and got in. So it worked out, worked out really well because. Uh, that which I said I'd go, go to school for turned to be something I, I quite enjoyed. But I always drew as a child. My mom said the first time she sort of took notice was in a, we were in uh, Beavers, which is sort of like the youngest version of Boy Scouts of Canada. I don't know what it's called elsewhere in the world, but but essentially we had to do rock, chalk drawings of ourselves where somebody would trace us on the pavement, and. Uh, we had to fill in all the details ourselves. And my mom said she, um, the beaver leader called her over after I was done my drawing and said, keep an eye on that because I'd gone through and draw, drawn all the details. So I drew in my, like, uh, my scarf, um, took note of the fact that I had a vest on with buttons and seams and things like that. And I was wearing a watch that day. So nothing was you know detail perfect or anything like that but the fact that i went through and added all that detail in um and that's when my mother said she started to i guess take a more serious note if i remember correctly and she was probably looking at all my sketches and noodles and things before that but yeah but that's when when somebody else sort of called it out and said yeah you should keep an eye on that talent since they should have always pushed it, not pushed it, but supported it, which is cool. Both parents did. And to say my mother because she was home more often than my father because he traveled. Hmm. Interesting. Almost like the shoulder can go through and come back down the other side like that. Just have to keep in mind all of the, uh, the fluffy parts as well. All right, now this is where it's going to get weird. Okay, maybe we we okay. Let's see if maybe we look at intentionally stylizing the shape, even though we weren't going to do a defined line. We can take a look at. Maybe it comes out like this. Very much across the top and then I like that or maybe if we don't Oops. Mm. I don't know how that I've done it no you've done it <laughs> you added many details? Stop it. I know. Hard to believe, right? Ah, uh, T. We had... The reason why I was thinking if I squared off the top there might be neat, because then we can always just sort of use that as a... You know, that's as high as you go kind of thing, and then... Oops. There wouldn't be this defined line for her, her belly, but her legs would come out. I 
let's take a look at that skeleton again. So and then narrow is there. Knees come way up. So then this is her hip. So if her spine comes right down the middle. And narrow hips, and those are her hip bones. That's where one of the knees go. This is tough because when there's no sort of defined limbs, you know, how do you draw them in? You just make her look like a big old beanbag chair. Hey, Aim, how's it going? Welcome to the chat. Always a pleasure to have you here. I'm trying to figure out a porcupine character design for the children's book I'm working on. Overall, I think I like how this is going. Oops, I want that back on. <laughs> yeah, some days I it is cool. I mean, I mean, I'm very grateful that I went what I went to school for. I can actually make a living doing. It's pretty pretty great actually. But I still have some days where, you know, I'm happy with graphic design, love it. But I'm sort of coming to realize there are other things that I just really want to do, like write a book, which I would never have never have dreamed of doing until my wife told me stop telling me your stories unless you're going to write them. <laughs> Feels like we've gone too wide with the arms here. I guess that would not be defined there as a line. I guess in the spirit of not doing too much arms. That's what I said I was going to do, right? Not too much arm. Or minim minimal arm drawings. This is how do you figure out? I feel like this is going to end up looking like a giant lion mane. I'm not careful. Again, maybe it's just a matter of not putting the hard line in there for her body. Maybe she just ends up being defined, her shape ends up being defined by the quills all the way down. Interesting. Welcome back, Alistair. Welcome back. And I've seen some artists who are able to very much, I forget his name, but there's one guy who does, maybe he does a circle for a lion He'll have the main go. He'll do something like this is an exaggeration, a butchering of his style. You know, do a super obvious nose, but then the main would be they keep they keep it a circle, and then just draw the lines for it all the way around. So everything is kept very. Uh, very geometric. It's kind of neat. The part of me wants to keep any pines, if not the if not those hard lines there, at least keep the quills just going very much to the edge of that shape, all the way down. And then maybe that's what I'll do is just sort of stylize it. And then that way her inner shape is very much going to be like that right down to the feet. Huh. Oh, I say, hmm. And if those were her feet, maybe it's as simple as Cosmic. Back. Front. Side. 
side, left side, right side. I should have the uh, another camera just focused on my tea so you can see when, every time I take a tea. A tea. All right, well. I think overall we got Penny figured out. Let's take a... Else do we need to figure out? Oh, yes, there's a squirrel. It's funny when you start to look at rodents. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna bring up a drawing. You bring up a rodents, they all start to look the same after a while. Squirrels are going to have a from side view. They seem to have a very more of an angular look to them. And compared to obviously the the eye size compared to any pines is going to be huge. This is an exaggeration. Trying to do this quickly from sketch here, it's almost like for the the image. Look at huge back leg. Or huge back feet though. It's interesting, almost instead of having a uh, a non-defined body shape, they've got a fairly fairly defined one. Just trying to cartoonize this one a little bit as I do it. Or maybe I shouldn't say obviously. I'm trying to cartoonize this one a little bit as I do it. The ears I always find mess me up a little bit. They almost some pictures they look like they're triangular, other ones they don't at all. I guess you could always just do them. Triangular, and some of them have got the tufts on top. They probably won't stay that way. We'll just do them that way for now. And to be honest, people is almost the entire eye on these guys. But we don't like that. Here. All right, take another. Let's do what we did with the uh, porcupine. Let's, as morbid as it sounds, let's look for squirrel skeleton.
And it looks strangely similar to <laughs> porcupine. Seriously? Actually, the big difference that I can tell is that well, it's smaller for one. I'm just gonna nick these down. Similar to the porcupine. I'm just gotta. That's what I mean. Keep accidentally double tapping. There are shoulder blades that come down right here. And then from there, the arms go back. And then down. Basically, the arms have got a bit of a rounded shoulders. Butts, it's lower than the elbow there. I like that. And then for these, the uh. I guess they almost always look like they're uh, ready to pounce. And there too. Oh, huh, that's interesting. They're uh, looks like they've got bone that goes down the majority of their tail. I wasn't sure if it was just, you know, at what point does the bone stop in the in the turn to muscle or whatever, but. That's interesting. So they've got a big rib cage right here. That's interesting. All right. Um, I sorry, I missed some. Does Moon Girl offer her motivational talks? <laughs> Those are all the for the others who also need to hear the words. Stop telling me your stories unless you're going to write them. Asking for a cosmic. Well, I will ask a moon girl for the cosmic. Both interstellar beings you are. That was basically it. That's She liked my story ideas, but it was basically, okay, now what are you going to do with it? Oh no, it's just a story idea I had. Hey, stop just having, just stop talking about them. Do something with them. I will ask the moon girl and see if she will. Send you a friendly. Get a move on it, cosmic. Text or a thing of sort, the sorts. We got that going up there. Need to keep that away. Is it curve that way or more? Is more straight. It's interesting because they've got very sharp front teeth, these these squirrely creatures. I guess I always envision them having these big old kind of, you know, I guess similar way that you see the muscles in the side of a horse where you've got the big old, the hind muscle, and then, uh, wait, how does the horse go? Is the back forward like this? No, other way. Yeah. I always pictured, I guess, being able to see the different sections. The leg of a squirrel, or a squirrel. Once you get once you get the fur involved, it's sort of similar to the uh, the porcupine. You can see some key things, but not really like a big old defined find like that. Well, I suppose I could do that for the sake of the cartoon. Is that actually the front? curve is pretty defined to the back of the foot then this sort of the back of it sort of disappears into the butt area a little bit so it's just all fluffy back there that's not
Well, my watch says I completed some sort of a ring just sitting here. Oh, look at that. I reached my activity goal sitting here. <laughs> look at all this talking I'm doing. Mistake. This is for the sake of kind of illustration similarity. So the I make the squirrel have similar toes to this is actually Lewis. So once um, all of these kind of feet and everything are going to look between all the characters will look pretty similar. This dude's hands are going to be tiny. Uh, I have many, many, many story ideas floating around in my head. Trouble is, I am really easily distracted. What, you want to research something? been there actually what i've come to realize over the years is that i'm i'm uh i'm good at dialogue so i can actually write oops a bunch of dialogue and then fill in the bits around it so that's what i've started do, working on the things that i know i can do fairly well <laughs> let's turn it A tale of squirrel i was trying to there's i wish i could find it again there was a, a book that i saw about animation years ago when i was younger and, it, and one of this the art the exercises they had in it was trying to um animate tale of a squirrel because you know as a as a, a squirrel runs it almost does this sort of a pattern and then as it leaps over here its tail is coming down underneath and then when it comes down and lands and takes off again, then its tail follows. So it's almost like it's almost like it the entire body does that motion like fluid. Like uh, yeah, like a fluid. The ears, I don't think they come up that way and come out. They really just come straight up like this. But not straight. Not a, a triangle. Um I'm just looking at photos right now. I guess it's sort of. I guess it depends on the drawing you look at. Some of the ears. I guess it depends on what the squirrel is listening to. Some of these ears look like they're pointed back. Other ones. Overall, it should probably be pointed forward. It makes the most sense if I'm just going to illustrate it. It does it, or is it better to bring it backwards? Hmm. Nope to those ears. I think I might have made that face a little bit too long. have big cheeks on them as well. Come on, pencil. You done you done English real good. Real good. Let's 
Okay, I'm not sure what to do about these eyes again. <laughs> this might have to be a pencil drawing book after all. Because every time I try to get into the, uh, you know, the heavy inking outline. Feels like it loses a bit of the uh, the fine line. I'd have to. Who knows? I mean, I could always try. No, that's not bad. It'll be a combination of the two. And I know that's not sketching with like a pencil, but it's not bad. All right, keeping that in mind. These ears are gonna bug me until I figure them out though. I'm trying to draw them as triangles, but not round really. I think the problem is I'm trying to draw them like a Dorito, like, you know, an isosceles triangle, and then figure out which way they go from there, but it's not really the case. That's not a terrible here. I just drawn it on the squirrel. Something about the forward facing ears, it makes it look more editorial. Or does it? Maybe I'm just making stuff up. So I do it this way, it almost looks like the ears are on backwards. I think this makes more sense in terms of what I've seen. Oops. I think in terms of stylizing it for cartooniness, you know, near triangles, even though they seem, as I said, Dorito-ish. make that face look too angular is maybe that's what the problem is mm, that looks foolish I think there's something about it that almost looks like too much, too much like a cat ready to pounce. Maybe I, I put the head too far away from the body. Maybe that's it. Something about this whole thing that seems slightly off to me. No, oh, that's better proportion-wise. Battery's dying. All right, well, we'll keep going until we can't go anymore. Hopefully this 10% battery will last us a little while longer still. My fault for not charging this bad boy earlier. I have yet to buy an extra cable yet. So. 
Oh, actually, no, there's a... I forgot I do have an extra... Well, charging port up here, but I don't have a cable. How are we doing for time? Oh, we'll probably be good. Sorry, Pith. <laughs> Sorry, Pith. I mean, I think we had a good Christmas. I think we did too. I mean, the, you know, we're not always able to do big gifts and stuff like that, but this is the first Christmas where I've been completely off from, well, I had two jobs for the past five years. And this year, um, one job and I'm off for 16 days straight. So it's been amazing just in that regard. Though so in Firepath, in my opinion, it also, in, in my opinion, also it was a good Christmas. We get it. Feels like this is missing something though, like just looking at all these photos I have up on my screen. I figure out what it is. Skeleton pack. I'm forgetting to do that, so let's redraw the skeleton here. I like having that for reference. quickly so I get the uh, e-reference points back in. Right, and then there was the rib cage. So when I first drew this, I mean the head was way out here, so I didn't do it proportionally right. So this looks better. Oops. No. And then let's take the detail back into this skeleton again. Ah, uh, uh, good one, Cosmic. See you through. Transparency back up, and then we'll turn you transparency. Oh no, let's turn that off for now, and then we can go to this layer and delete the skeleton that we have in there still. No need to have repeating information on multiple layers. Mm hmm. Alright. Oh, 
Cool. Thanks, Firepith. I'm pretty pleased with them as well. Yeah, I know I'm trying to figure out the back of that leg yet. Maybe we'll just keep it so that's that's all all hidden in. Again, the the chances of this dude being visible side on is pretty pretty slim. Again, I just like to figure it out from multiple things. I like to figure out things from multiple angles if I can. All right. Uh... <laughs> Cosmic. Yeah, and I sorry sorry about that. In one of the other streams, I said that you would be the only one that could use the eye roll because I I had my um my levels mixed up and so I thought that you and someone else could already use Boris Love and then I thought you had the eye roll but the eye roll is actually for the next level up. And I wish there were certain times I could just give emotes to people who are like, who've clearly been around for a long time and, but I sort of get it. It's the whole point is people, which is model is to encourage people to spend the monies Three-quarter view on this dude. It's pretty much round all the way down. Again, it's a rodent thing. I guess they're pretty lean though. They've got a bit more of a, essentially a bit of a tuft in the chest there. And these legs are huge. I guess that, ta that tail is always going to be me up and behind. Just pointing to something else going on over here.
That's pretty fun. Glad you feel it's worth the wait. Thank you very much. I'm going to actually. I wanted to encourage to change the um the Boris, not the Boris, but the the shark hype emote, so that it was in a circle like the other two. But in order to do that, I would have to delete it and then uh, resubmit it. And the last time I submitted it, it took I think. It was weeks and weeks before it got approved the first time, so I don't necessarily want to uh, do that. Or I don't really necessarily want to make people go without an emote. But I'd rather just wait, I guess, until I've got enough affiliate hours under my belt that I can just get the automatic approval, and then and then I'll just resubmit it then. That dude over there is doing something fishy. Wait, what's this again? Cosmic, do you have a, a start date yet for your stream? Or just sort of still sort of a sometime in January kind of thing? I forgot. Squirrel's got whiskers. Where do they come from? Not this, the nose necessarily. It's not bad. On two different angles where Lewis is looking like Lewis still, which is good. And obviously still rough sketches still, but you know, the dream is to have them look the same from every <laughs> possible angle angle you draw them, so it's good. Alright, I gotta check to see what we're doing for or how we're doing for battery power. We're at six percent with fifteen minutes left. I think we can do it. Actually, give me one second there. I'm going to, uh... Yeah, no, we'll go. We'll keep going. And if we run out of battery, then we'll just call it. I think this dude's gonna have an acorn. Originally, I think I was gonna give him an acorn hat. I'm not sure about I feel about I'm not sure how I feel about that. Let's just check here.
Maybe not that kind of acorn head. What other hats going to be? Okay, so if we had an acorn hat, it would be that used the top of the acorn. It would be just your, you know, your standard, like almost like an acorn beret. Which would totally be good squirrel attire. And we did the flip side of that and did the bottom of the acorn. It will almost look like a toque. Yeah, I'm not sure we could do that with either of them without messing with the ears. Although it would be kind of a funny, uh, funny hat. Almost looks like a, almost looks like a squirrel pope. We won't be doing that. I know that's just a quick sketch, but. I like the idea of accessorizing the animals a little bit, but I guess I don't hate the idea of of that kind of hat on Lewis. We'll see. Uh, mid to late January, I think, with all the Christmas stuff. Oh, I misread that. Sorry, you want to do some? Oh, some testing tech-wise. Yeah. Yeah. No, that totally makes sense. Testing, testing, testing is good. Actually, I'll just leave that there, just in case. We can always bring that down. Actually, I had a hat like that. That's not bad. Maybe the it would have to have holes cut out of it or something. I don't know. We'll leave the hat off for now because it just feels like it's forcing it when it may not actually need it. Let's just see if we had dude yelling like this. 5% battery power. Can we make it? It's a pretty long snout. No, it looks like a more of a mouse nose. Little fists all in a ball there, just yelling his head off. That'd be fun. Like I said, the more I do this with just pencil, and not any thick lines, the more I think that's got to stay. This is the part I like when you start adding the, the details and it starts to take shape a little bit more than what you had the rough sketches. Ah.
That's right, Fancy Squirrel and his acorn beret. Oh, thanks, Amy. It's, uh, well, it's been years. I've been doing this for years and years. And and one of the things I taught my, uh, told my friend when I was trying to teach him how to draw a little bit years ago is that a lot of it is, is patience. Allowing yourself to take hours and hours to do a drawing. I'm gonna, I've been here, you know, I'm going on almost two and a half hours and I've done these three sketches and oops and these two so basically I've done a bunch of doodling but came up with kind of maybe just five sketches in two and a half hours so it's it's basically it's a lot of allowing yourself you know allowing you yourself to take the time and have it be okay for things to take forever like if I wanted to go in and actually give this all the detail that you know felt like it probably deserved, if this was going to be the final drawing, I'd probably go in and you know do the little the little dots there where the whiskers would join in. You know, little tiny details, but that's where that's the difference between a sketch and a real drawing. It's not like even if you drew a face like when you drew a face like this. And then you thought, all right, well, that's that's fun. Let's get in there and let's do some an eyebrow, another eyebrow. No, nah. let's make them chunky. Actually, instead of chunky, let's let's make these like old man chunky eyebrows. So they're gonna be like get in there with some big old hairy eyebrows. And instead of you know, keep the eyes circular if you wanted to, but since it's got a smile, there would be cheeks that come up and kind of close the eyes a little bit. And then if you've got the irises, they could be circles. And if you think, oh, I'd like to put pupils in, and a couple of highlights, then you just draw. It's it's basically, it's just taking a look. At, it's taking the time to look at the detail and adding the detail in. And if it takes you hours to do a single drawing, Maybe even days. That's all it is. It's just taking the time to look at the details and put it in. The face is getting creepier by the second. Firepith, you're not helping. <laughs> Firepith! <laughs> it's funny, I was just doing this one for fun. It ends up being almost my favorite sketch on the page. Something about this one, I very much like. I guess in the, the spirit of the way that I draw, not in the spirit, but in the way that I draw. So I've got this sort of figured out trying to make a good style, but if you've seen boring, or if you've seen uh, Big Salty Pond at all, or any of my other stuff, it's pretty angular. So in the end, it'll probably end up looking something more like. Instead of being round in the, the leg here, oops. Probably end up being something more like. Angles and things. And then this sort of this sort of stuff like this angular stuff I've done here will, will then lend itself better to over there. And then so the tail itself would probably be flattened off in the top. And there as well. It's fun to get just the reference drawings and lines and things. And... Alright, how are we doing? Should we down to 4%? Actually, I think I'm going to... Now we were just a few minutes before. I guess we'll get rid of that creepy... As far as we call it, creepy face from up there. No need to keep things... No need to keep creepy things around. There. All right, so that's two of the characters a little bit more figured out than I had before, which is good. Very happy with the way uh, Penny here turned out. So I do still need to figure out some more of how the arms are going to uh, be. I don't want them to, again, the whole point is to do, draw as, as little arms detail as possible. Nope, turn off the skeleton. We have very little arm over here. I'm trying to figure out how to do the same thing. 
on this side. Actually, since this is the front view, maybe it's just a matter of doing doing that part of the face? Does that look weird? That looks a bit weird. Anyway. Pretty happy with Penny Pine overall. <laughs> Cosmic. That's funny. It's Cope prepares to leave. Hey, no, 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 no. Don't be doing that. All right. Cool. I think we're going to end. End with Penny Pine there. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining in. We are now just a couple minutes away from 10 o'clock. So this sort of finished off as much as my brain can do right now on these two characters. So, um, yeah. Thank you all very much for joining in in the drawing stream today. I'm, uh, thanks, Alistair. I'm going to keep doing this because there's part of me that wasn't really sure what I wanted to draw tonight now that I sort of got the main emotes out of the way. But then I guess the part of the whole point of this is that I need to do this book. I want to do this book. So I'm going to take the opportunity to do probably more character sketches and things. Nothing too defined that would give away the entire, um, story on stream, obviously, but I'm going to continue to do work and figure out these characters a little bit better. So, um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, as per usual, if Twitter is your thing, I am over on Twitter at Steven ESC and then also on YouTube at Steven ESC as well, where this video, as well as all of the previous ones, will be up there and archived. And if Discord is your thing and you're not already there, there's a link down in the info section and you can sort of keep up to date on schedule changes and things like that. Um, what else? Oh yeah. Wait, actually, I forgot I can type them in here right now. So let's do this. We got Twitter. Oops, I can spell. Cool. And then we've got um, Discord. Oh my goodness! Thank you very much for for tagging along there. Cosmic and Firepith, thank you for the comments. And then what was the other one I was going to do? Oh yeah. VOD, and then there is also, I forgot, a webcomic that I do called Big Salty Pond, and another one actually, um, oops, stop, another one I do called Sipping Applesauce as well, and they're both over, you can see them both over on patreon.com slash stevenesc, so once again, thank you very much everyone for, you know, hanging out with me tonight while I do some drawing, it was a lot of fun. I uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of your night. And for you, Cosmic, have a wonderful early morning. <laughs> and I'll be back Tuesday with some Minecraft. So hopefully we'll see you all then. So Tuesday at 730 Atlantic, right? Thank you very much, everyone. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.